G'day, it's Pete here and I'm back for another featured lesson. Now, today I wanted to talk about redoubles in bridge. Now, they're a very important part of bridge, but they're really underutilized. Um, they don't come out too often, but when they do, they can be used for great impact or they can be used to get you to a better spot. Now, today I wanted to talk about five different types of redoubles. Uh, what we've got is we've got values redoubles, we've got support redoubles, rescue redoubles, play redoubles and conventional redoubles. So let's just jump straight into it and start talking about values redoubles. Okay, so let's say that the auction goes one club and the next hand doubles. So what I like redouble to be here is to say partner I have some values and as responder this whenever I say values it's sort of invitational or better so 10 plus points but you also want to use it to say, I don't have a fit in clubs. Now, some people play redouble says, I think I can make one club to redoubled, which is actually a really poor idea because if you think you can make one club redouble based on a fit, then you should just be supporting your partner. Because if you don't support your partner straight up, then uh, the opponents get to bid at the one level, at a nice safe level, maybe find their fit at a really low level. Whereas if you just have a normal fit for clubs, you want to just raise clubs and get to the appropriate level so that they don't come in nice and low. So redouble here says I've got 10 or more points. It doesn't promise a fit. It usually denies a fit. There are some uh, cases that you can ha actually have a fit. So 10 plus high card points is what I like to use for my redouble. Invitational or better, 10 plus. And what you want to discuss here are what are subsequent doubles. Because the whole aim of this is we want to try and penalize the opponents. So my general guide for after you make a value showing redouble, or if you make a value showing double, um, is if you show values with a double or redouble, I like to play one, two, three doubles, which is first double values, second double takeout, third double penalties. However, if we've actually bid a suit already, then I like to switch it up, and if we've shown a suit, then values, then just straight into penalties. Because I find that once we've found a suit, I've got less need of a takeout double, so I just want to go straight into penalties. So for me, in this spot, subsequent doubles would be uh, penalty doubles, but you want to discuss with your partnership how you play subsequent doubles. So anytime you do a values double or redouble, make sure you've got a clear agreement of when when and what subsequent uh, doubles actually are. So let's have a, another look at uh, a values double. So let's say our partner opened a heart and I went double and here we can redouble again. So 10 or more points, I don't have a fit in hearts and I'm interested in penalizing them. Subsequent doubles in this case would be penalties because it's gone suit then values, and then penalty. Whereas if we hadn't shown a suit yet, then it would be values, takeout, penalty. So an instance of that might be 1-0 trump, double, redouble, but you have to actually discuss that one, and I'll get back to that one uh, in a little bit. So a couple of things that you might want to discuss here, or look at more importantly, is with your redouble, is you're interested in trying to penalize the opponents. If you have no interest in penalizing the opponents because you've got some wildly unbalanced hand, then it's better just to try and bid your suit. Uh, the other thing is look at the vulnerability because if the opponents are not vol and you're vol, you're probably not going to get rich out of uh, redoubling and then doubling them out at the one level. But if you do that, then you just give the opponents more information about what sort of suits they actually want to try and play. So. It, when you redouble, your general aim is to actually try and penalize the opponents. Very rarely can you actually have support for this. You can redouble and then sort of bid two hearts occasionally, but the, the main thing is when you've got a fit, you want to be supporting your partner as soon as possible. Now, these values redoubles mainly occur as the responder. Um, they can occasionally occur as the advancer, but they're pretty rare. And they can occur in certain other spots, but it is usually the responder that would be making these values uh, redoubles. And again, the values have 10 or more points. Okay, let's move on to the next type of double, which was a support redouble. Now, this is used by a different player. This is used by the opener. 
And after you open, um, when partner responds one of a major. So let's say we have an auction like this and the opponent's double. What I like to play is support doubles and redoubles. So whenever partner responds one of a major, if the next hand intervenes um, below two of partner's major, then you can use support doubles. And if they double, you can use a support redouble. So a redouble here would say, partner, I have exactly three card support for you. So it doesn't promise any extra values. Uh, it just says I have three card heart support. So that way you can really identify five three heart fits pretty quickly. Um, and again, support doubles and redoubles uh, only used by the opener. And I like it when partner responds one of a major and the next hand only intervenes with a double or a suit bid up to two of partner's suit. If they preempt you, then support doubles are off. Uh, obviously when they double, redoubles are always support, but this is only when partner responds one of a major. Sometimes you'll have options like, uh, let's say it goes one spade and partner bids two hearts and it goes double. Redouble here isn't a support redouble because partner hasn't responded one of a major. Um, what this redouble is, probably just extra values interested in actually penalizing them. So I'd go back to the values redouble, but it really depends on what the opponent's double is. If they're playing penalty doubles here, I would play redouble here as to play. But we'll get back to, uh, to play redoubles later. Okay, the next kind of redouble that I wanna try and discuss is the rescue redouble. Now, <laughs> this one, uh, is a bit dangerous and you only want to do it if you and your partner are on the same wavelength and you have clear agreements about when is it a rescue redouble. So let's look at this hand. Let's say that uh, our partner opened one club and we choose to pass because we've got no points and now it goes double pass pass to us. So here what we want to do is we definitely want to run from one club double because when the opponents double you at the one level they're usually right. They have a massive stack of the suit and running is almost always right. And in this case, it is evident that we want to run from a club. But the issue is if we bid a diamond, we might not find our best fit. So if we bid a diamond and we get doubled there, then we have to choose do we want to bid a heart or do we want to bid a spade and so forth. But what we really want to find out is input from partner about which suit they actually want to play in. So we want a way of basically saying, partner, you choose. And this is what the rescue redouble actually is. So in this hand, we can redouble, which says, partner, please take this out and tell me what your favorite suit actually is. Now you want a few clear rules, as I mentioned beforehand. And the rules that I like to use are the opponents have actually tried to penalize you. So if we backtracked and it went uh, one club double and we redoubled, the, this double is a takeout double. They haven't tried to penalize us yet. So this redouble isn't for rescues, but would be the values redouble that we showed earlier. But when it goes pass, pass, and they double and back to us, now they've made a penalty pass, and now we can use the redouble for rescue. So the opponents have tried to penalize you is the first one. Not that you expect that they're about to penalize you, but that the opponents have actually tried to penalize you. Second one is that you haven't actually found a fit. So if I had raised clubs and then redoubled, that's not a rescue redouble. So if we've actually agreed a fit, then it is not a rescue redouble because we've already found a decent spot to play. So if we already had a conversation and found where our best spot is, then redouble isn't rescue. Rescue redoubles happen very early in the auction. Um, not once you've found a fit. Also, uh, it's when you've got a weak hand. So uh, anytime you've shown sort of weakness in the auction, then you can start using uh, rescue redoubles because if you've got a good hand, you're not gonna try and do any rescuing. But here, we've shown a weak hand and we can go there. And then finally, it's at a low level. Once you start getting up to like the four level, maybe even the three level, Rescue redoubles don't really apply so much anymore because it's getting too hard to actually start finding them. So again, the rules are the opponents have tried to penalize you. Uh, we haven't found a fit yet. 
uh, we're showing a weak hand, well, we've shown a weak hand, sorry, and finally we're at a lowish level. And basically it says, partner, please just tell me what your next best preference is. So if I open up all the cards, then what we can see is on this hand is we want to get to hearts. Now if I bid a diamond and it goes double, uh, our partner will pass it because they don't know we don't have five or six diamonds. And then it's hard to actually get to one heart, which they probably won't double, but they might choose to. And one heart is definitely our best spot. So we want part to redouble, find out partner's best suit. They can then say that I like hearts, and then we can play the doubled or let the opponents bid on. Okay, so the next kind of, uh, well, another example of a rescue redouble. Let's say it goes one no trump and it goes pass, pass, and it goes double, pass, pass to us. Here we can try and rescue out to the minor by redoubling. And if we go through the rules again, uh, the opponents have tried to penalize us. Yes, tick, they doubled. Uh, secondly, uh, we haven't found a fit yet. We haven't done anything, so yep. Uh, we've shown a weak hand because we've passed one no trump. And then finally, it's at a low level. So redouble here, I, I like it to be rescue saying please bid something um, tell me what your cheapest four card minor is usually because if I had mages maybe I would have run to that already so here we can get partner to run and if we open up all the cards again then we can see that they'll bid two clubs and we get to find our club fit on this sort of hand now what I mentioned earlier is we have to discuss what an immediate double of one no trump and then a redouble is so this is really dependent on partnership agreement. Some people like to run from one no trump a lot. Some people want this to be, I've got a good hand, I've got some values, let's try and actually penalize them. This one is purely on partnership agreement and it fits into both rule, well, into the rules of a rescue redouble in that uh, the opponents have tried to penalize you because doubles values. Um, we haven't found a fit yet and it's a low level, but we haven't necessarily shown a weak hand. But we could have a weak hand here. So really up to you about how you want to play this redouble. Do you want it to have as a method of running, please bid like two clubs or please bid your cheapest minor or whatever you want to do. Or you can have it as a values double. Like I've got a good hand. I think the opponents have made a mistake. Let's try and penalize them. And then this would start values doubles. And because we haven't shown a suit yet, it would be values double, uh, then takeout double, then penalty doubles. So again, going back to values, what I like to do is if we make a values double or redouble, if we haven't shown a suit, values take out them penalties. If we have shown a suit, then just suit, values, penalties. Um, so in this case, if uh, the opponents run, ran and we doubled them, then it would be uh, take out. But I like this redouble to be strong. But it's really up to your partnership to discuss, do you want this to be to run or do you want this to um, be for strength? Anyway, uh, so there are a couple of uh, rescue redoubles. Again, quick rules. Opponents tried to penalize you. You haven't found a fit yet. You're showing a you've shown a weak hand and that you're at a low level. And you want, basically you're saying, partner, please give me some information. Where do you want to go on this hand? Okay, the next type of redoubles are to play redoubles. So basically, I think the opponents have made a big mistake here. I want to up the ante as much as possible and play for the big stakes. So for instance, let's say it went four spades and the next opponent doubled for penalties. Um, or even if they doubled for takeout. What you can do here is you can redouble to say, partner, I have a really good hand. I think you're going to make four spades and I want to penalize the opponents. And the reason that you might want to do this is, let's say the next hand has complete garbage and they're in, they're in a world of trouble. What can happen is they might just think that passing out four spades doubled is the best option for them. They're comparing minus 790 to minus 1100 and they think 790, that's a fine score, so let's pass. So when you redouble, that really puts the pressure on them and makes sure that you get the most out of this. Now, if you want to do uh, redouble to play, what you have to do is you have to be in a spot where you A, think you're making your contract, and secondly, 
what you want to do is be sure that when when the opponents run, you are happy doubling that contract and you are think, thinking you're getting equal value out of it. So those two things need to be happen, happening. Firstly, you think you need to make your contract. Secondly, remember that you're encouraging your opponents to run from this. And if they run, you think you're getting better value than if they just passed out four of your suit doubled. Which is pretty rare, but there are definitely times this happens. And I really love sending back contracts to try and make. So we've got a question. What would it be if you had that previous bad hand and you opened the bidding with pass, pass, one no trump, double? Uh, so on the previous one where we had the Yarbrough and it's gone pass, pass, a no trump, double. Again, uh, you can have it either way. Like I, I wouldn't change it because of pass because... To redouble one no trump, I only really want like eight or more points, so invitational or better. And because my partner's shown 15 to 17, um, eight, nine points is invitational, and that's still within the range of my past hand, so I wouldn't have changed it uh, if I was a past hand. So I would still leave my redouble as the exact same. But uh, good question. Anyway, so back to to play redoubles. Yeah, you want to. Answer these two questions. Firstly, I think I'm making this contract. Secondly, if the opponents run from this, they're going to be in a world of pain. So we want to try and redouble them. Uh, it happens a lot over when your partner preempts and the next hand doubles. It also happens a lot when uh, you found a fit in your bid game and you think your opponents have made a tight double just based on a bad trump suit. Lots of people think that, oh, I've got five trumps so I can double and beat this. Whereas if you have extra values, you can send that back. Or sometimes you might have made, were thinking about making a slam try and the opponent doubles in front of you. You want to redouble, put them under the pump. They've made a mistake up that ante. They're the sort of main times that you'll be using redoubles to play. Um, so here, nice, easy redouble to say they're in, in a lot of trouble. Another one might be it goes two spades and it goes double. And on this hand, I would redouble as well. We're fairly sure we're making two spades, we've got a good hand, and we want to penalise the opponents. We don't want to let them just pass out two spades, hoping that's their best spot. But the other thing is when you redouble in this spot to say to play, your partner now gets an option to double as well. So it might go uh, three clubs, and your partner can double to say, yeah, I've got a trick for you. Or if they don't double, then they're just saying, I don't have any defence for you. So you can use redouble to play here to also get cooperation out of your partner. Because you said you're interested in penalising them, and you already know that they don't have a very defensive hand, if they've got a trick for you, they should be doubling here. If they don't have a trick for you, they can pass. So if you use the redouble to play here and say, I'm interested in penalising the opponents, uh, then you get some more cooperation out of your partner. So again, after your partner preempts and it goes double, redouble says, I think I can. Ma we're making two spades, and I want to penalise the opponents. When they run, if your partner has a trick in defence or a decent defensive hand, they should be doubling that contract. If instead they pass, they're saying, I don't really have any good defence for you. Um, so if we open up, up the hands... Um, now we can see that, not that the opponents would run to three clubs here, they'd run to three diamonds, but your partner has uh, no good defense. So if we had the option go like this, they'll pass. They, they don't have the ace of spades, they don't have any aces, they don't have any outside singletons. So they'd pass and say, I don't have any tricks. And then this helps you try and count how many tricks you've got on defense. Because here we've got uh, a diamond trick, a spade trick, maybe a heart trick, maybe a club trick. And we realise that we're here expecting maybe four tricks, so we wouldn't actually try and penalise them in this case because our partner didn't want to cooperate. Um, whereas if they doubled, we'd be very happy passing three diamonds doubled for penalties. So that's a little bit about uh, to play redoubles. Um, you're, you definitely think you can make your contract. You're telling your partner, I also think we can penalise whatever they bid. If it's at this low level like this, you're 
Well, in any case, you're asking your partner to cooperate in doubles as well. And they have to consider, I haven't shown much defense or they have shown uh, some defense. So therefore they can penalize them anyway. So question, why not two no trumps, two weak? Uh, you mean, so let's, why not two no trumps instead of redouble? Okay, so what answer do you want to find out from, like two no trumps is an inquiry, what do you want to find out from your partner? If you find out they've got a shortage, it lets the opponents off the hook. When you redouble, the opponents have to get into the auction, they can't just pass, they have to bid. By redoubling, they, like if you bid two no trumps, you have let them off the hook and you remove any chance of penalizing. If the opponents wanted to try and play three hearts, for instance, you would be very, very happy doubling this and taking a very large number out of it. If you bid two no trumps, the west hand will always pass and you lose that chance to try and penalize the opponents. So, uh, like you, you're not too weak for two no trumps um, over the double, but when they've when they have doubled, then you would instead prefer to uh, see if the opponents run to the wrong spot and go from there. Okay, uh, next thing I want to talk about is conventional redoubles. So uh, when we've bid some sort of convention and the opponents double it and we have a chance to redouble. And there are lots of different cases here, but I'll just talk about three of them uh, today, and which is uh, when the opponents double stamen, when the opponents double a stopper ask, and when the opponents double a cubid. So in all these different spots. So and the general rules surrounding it. So let's say it goes one no trump, two clubs, double. So what would it be a redouble here? Now this is something you want to discuss with your partner in your partnership. There's lots of different uh, things people play. My general approach is I like it to say I've got good clubs and I'm happy to try and play here. Again, this puts the pressure back on the opponents and they now have to wander into this auction or let you play two clubs redouble, which gets you a game bonus. So I play redouble here as I've got good clubs and I think they've made an aggressive lead directing double. Let's try and penalize the opponents. Other people like this to show whether or not they've got club stoppers and other things like that. So there are different answers to what this redouble is. But at really low levels, I like redouble just to say, I think we can play here. Um, the opponents have made a mistake. And again, that puts the pressure back on the opponents. They might then choose to bid something and get themselves doubled, which might be more lucrative than our, us bidding our game, or even if we were just inviting game. So if the opponents double stamen, I like redouble just to be uh, to play. I've got really good clubs. I'm happy to play here opposite a doubleton club. If instead the opponents double a stopper us. So let's say the opponents have opened the suit and we want to try and angle for three new trumps. So we bid their suit at the three level to try and find out do we want to play there and they double it again. So in this case, they've given us more room to discover what kind of stopper that we've got. So what I like to do, I don't have a hand for this, sorry, but uh, is I like to have redouble to say I've got like a partial stopper. If I had a good stopper, like a solid like, if I was happy to bid three no trumps, I would bid three no trumps. So I like redouble to say I'm most of the way to the stopper. I might have queen doubleton, jack third, those sorts of things. Like, do you have half a stopper as well? And if that's the case, we can now identify whether we've got um, two half stoppers and still get to three no trumps in that spot because they've given us that extra room with the double. So we don't want to play in their suit, so redouble is no longer to play in their spot, but uh, when they double our stopper ask, we can use redouble say, yep, I've got part of a stopper. Is that what you were looking for to actually get to three no trumps? And then the final type of redouble uh, I mentioned was when the opponents double our cubid and we're showing first or second round control with our cubids. We can then use redouble to say, yes, I've actually got first round control. So let's just give an imaginary auction where this might happen. So it might go one heart, pass, three hearts, uh, pass, three spades. We're ignoring the hand that we've actually got. First or second round control in spades. So it might go double and it goes pass, which says, what do you actually have? 
And then you go redouble, I've got first round control. So if you're in a cubiting option showing first or second round controls, um, and the opponents double your cubit, you can use redouble to say, partner, I've actually got first round control of this suit. Similarly, if partner redoubles, they would also have first round control uh, in that suit. So you can use the redouble as a part of your cubiting sequence to help um, fill out more def definitions. So when the opponents double, you can use the redouble as an extra space, find out more information about the hand because they got in there and doubled. Anyway, that's all I want to talk about uh, redoubles today. We talked about values doubles and what your subsequent doubles are. Uh, we talked about uh, support doubles, we talked about rescue redoubles, to play redoubles, and then a few different conventional spots. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.